Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. Today we're going to do a character guide on Anna Crow. Um, I'm just jumping right into the character guide here. I did not summon for her FR at all. I already, already have her fully built up. And one thing I will say is I do believe she comes back later with the BT. And she's someone where like her FR, like you really want her doing the damage with the FR. And without a BT, it's hard for her to carry that the whole way through. So right now I'm going to say her FR really isn't that important. But she is very, very good with other characters' FRs, which I'm going to try to showcase in this video. Um, she pairs very well with Hope, because for those of you unfamiliar with Anna Crow, basically, she is a basically the definition of a selfish damage dealer. Like, she really doesn't provide anything for the party, but she herself can dish out a ton of damage, especially in the correct setup, right? Um, so... She is a little bit trickier to play. She revolves around very specific buffs and debuffs. You got to make sure you upkeep those uh, to keep her going. So I'm going to kind of teach you about how that works in the video. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by looking at her calls really quick. And then we'll look at her artifacts and her spheres, right? Her calls now are kind of interesting. I personally have never really used her calls a lot. But basically, like, when she comes in on the calls, she just immediately will do a debuff called Probably Divine Punishment. Uh, which is a defense down and then a uh, holy and dark uh, imperil. So it will do a, a holy and dark resist down to the enemies. Um, and so basically Anna Crow herself will do holy and dark damage as well um, for the actual character. So it's got a nice little imperil. The defense down is okay. Nothing too crazy on that though. Um, so she does that on the 15. Um, and then the other thing is it does is it like rounds the character's brave damage up to the nearest thousand. Now, as a call, that's not like too crazy, but for Enna Crow herself, it's kind of a cool thing because she's going to like always have that, right? Now on the LD call, once again, and this is just for the, and it also is, sorry, going to holy and dark enchant the caller. So if you needed to enchant the caller for those two elements, it's going to put the resist down on the enemy. So it's basically your caller is going to have weakness damage in that situation. And then on the LD, that's going to be a, an attack up. It's going to be an HP damage up and overflow stolen up. It's also going to light and dark enchant. And then it gives the caller, while the call is up after their action, a 20% chance to refill their EX. So it is kind of a cool, like, niche uh, call. It's not anything I would go out of my way to get. Um, but it's not the worst call. Like, it does do some cool things. It's just you're probably not ever going to be your first choice for a call, right? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Anacor herself. And actually, I got to do this really quick here live on the video because I'm about to do the showcase. I actually didn't force enhance her yet. So let's, let me just force enhance her really quick here. Um, because I don't want to have to redo the video. So let's force enhance her up. So I think she is literally that's how quick I hopped into the video. And you can see my force enhanced stones are actually looking really good. I'll have to go in and pick some other characters that I want to force enhance. Um, but yeah, she's she's gonna be pretty good here. Alright, so we got the force enhancements up. Alright, so let's go back into Anna Crow here. And what we'll do is we'll look at her artifacts and we'll look at her spheres. Let me just hop back in. And I'm on the Shinryu fight that I want to showcase. I'm just going to hit auto here just to make sure everything's in with the force enhancements. And then, so for artifacts, what you want to give her is you want to give her attack 108 and then mysterious guide up two star. The thing with Enna Crow, and this is the reason why, like if you want to use her, you really need to full invest in her. Her big gimmick is she summons this big robot called Omega God. And basically, um... Previously, Omega God basically doubled all of the stats. Like, it did 200% of whatever Enna Crow had. Now it does 300%. So, basically, Omega God is only as strong as Enna Crow is. So, the stronger you make Enna Crow, basically, you're going to triple that strength into the robot, which is what you really, really want to do. So, you want to make sure your artifacts are totally maxed out. Really put on, like, top-tier spheres on her. Give her blue armor, Ultima weapon, which that's how I'm going to have her set up in this video. Um, so that's really, if you if you really like Anna Crow, go full, full invest. And that does not include the Force Weapon, by the way. The Force Weapon, like, if you got her with an Ultima Weapon on, the Force Weapon won't improve her in any way. It really just gives her the Force Time, which you don't need her Force Time for her to be good. And actually, her Force Time isn't optimal for her right now because, once again, she doesn't have a Burst Phase to take a bunch of turns in a row. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use Luna Freya to do, like, a mini Burst Phase. And you're going to see she's going to dump out some big damage, but... I would say definitely if you got her fully built already, you don't need the FR. Wait for later on when she gets a BT, then grab it then. I think she'd be a pretty nasty BT character, right? So secondary, you could do attack 108, max break 330. But I would say, yeah, you want attack 108, mysterious guide up. Um, so I just want to make sure I've got that set. So there we go. And then let's go ahead and look at her sphere. So for sphere, she's a triple A slot, right? Like big time damage dealer. 
Um, really, Brave Damage and Attack are the two biggest ones, or Attack with Max Brave Combo, or Attack with Brave Damage Combo. These are the types of things that I would do, right? So, back when I first got her, I put her full Sphere on, and that's weakness damage, you get Eye Brave and Attack, that's fine. Like, and kind of what I chose with my Spheres is I did Spheres that kind of sprinkle in multiple stats, since they're all getting tripled, um, I kind of did a little bit of all that. But Attack is the big reason I have that one on there. And then I've got um, Zondes here, which is, once again, it's another weakness damage sphere. So that's Brave Damage and Max Brave. So, like, Brave Damage is a key stat, and getting Max Brave is good as well. Um, and then in the last slot, I have Edgar, which uh, is doing more Brave Damage. I feel like with Omega God, tripling everything, um, getting a lot of Brave Damage is actually really important. So I have seen people recommend, like, so 7 Sphere is very similar to this. So 7 is also a Brave Damage 10%, it's just on Weakness Damage. I didn't happen to have any extra 7 Spheres I could put on, because that's probably what I would have done. But Enacro does put a debuff on herself, and then other allies will typically debuff. So Edgar's is going to be pretty much just as good here, because you are getting that 10% Brave Damage. So I have seen people, like, recommend to go, like, triple Brave Damage Sphere, so you could do, like, triple Edgar seven like some combination of that if you want to try that i kind of did a, mi a mishmash where i've got pretty much i've got a i've got a brave damage one here brave damage max brave and then i've got attack i brave so i'm kind of spreading out the stats a little bit but it's totally up to you and obviously on a weakness damage character i will shut out rydia rydia is very good because you're getting attack brave damage and then jack is also good you're getting attack brave damage there um i would say like something like Sephiroth would be good where you're getting attacks attack and max brave so once again Look through your A slots and pick the best ones you want. The one thing I would say to avoid is Anna Crow was a little deceiving because when you see her, you see her attacking, you think she's a magic damage dealer and she is for only her 15 CP, but the rest of her attacks that are summoning Omega God, Omega God comes out with like a big sword and they're actually physical attacks. So Anna Crow actually has mixed damage, but her main attacks are Omega God, which are physical damage. So you could do physical melee spheres, um, but I wouldn't recommend it because she does do magic damage on her FR and her skill 1. When, whenever a character has a mixed kit, I really don't recommend like diving into any of those pieces. So I would say avoid magic, avoid physical, avoid melee. Just do straight up attack, brave damage, and max brave. That's really what you want to do there with Enna Crow. So that being said, we're going to hop into the showcase. And what I'm going to do first is I might just like take a crack at like each of her attacks and just kind of explain it. And then what we'll try to do is we'll try to set up a, a Hope Force Time because she pairs really, really well with Hope Force Time. I obviously will explain how hers works, um, even though I'm not using it in the video. Um, and then hopefully you'll understand how she works. Now, I do have a very full invest and a crow here. So I do have Ultima Weapon and Blue Armor, so keep that in mind. And you're going to see why you want that full invest, right? So let's go ahead and hop in. And sure, let's go ahead and pop in like this. I am going to do a separate video where I beat up the Spiritus Tree with this combo because I actually haven't beaten that one yet because I did not summon for Reigns FRBT and I as hard as that event is without Reigns FRBT I wasn't force I wasn't gonna force myself to summon for it and I do think Enna Crow can kind of cheese it so that's kind of what I'm gonna go with there sure we'll just grab a selfie just for fun here and then let's go ahead and hop in all right so what we'll do first is we'll just start by explaining Enna Crow okay. Now the big thing is, is there's there's kind of two buffs you want to make sure you're upkeeping and there's one debuff you want to upkeep. So we're going to talk about that right now. So Enna Crow does not start with an overhead and her overhead is really the key to making her work. Her overhead comes from her EX or her LD. Now she's going to start with her EX up, so I would think that you're safe to open with her EX. Just keep in mind her EX is slow turn rate, so it is going to delay her. So let's start by talking about her EX. So this is Atomic Impact. Let's go and press the buttons here. Let's see how much damage we're getting here from Enna Crow. So there's Omega God, <laughs> doing Omega God things. So once again, this is tripling everything. So that was just a, a casual two mil AOE, right? With no force time, like that's very, very good. Um, so what Atomic Impact does is it summons Omega God. It does basically a big AOE attack and that was all dark damage, by the way. Um, it doesn't consume her Brave, and that's kind of key to what her Force Time does, because her part of her Force Time wants you to be at max Brave. So what you're going to notice with Enna Crow, a bunch of her attacks like don't consume Brave. So basically she gets her Brave max and just kind of sits there for all these HP dumps, which is really good. Um, but her EX is cool because it deletes all enemies' turns. So you notice the turns got deleted there. So her kind of getting delayed isn't as big of a deal because the enemies' turns are getting deleted, right? Um, and then 
basically brave and HP damage limit are tripled. So what you're going to notice is anytime Omega God's out, basically her stuff is tripled. So just keep that in mind. And then she is going to get a free ability use on the next turn. But notice she gets two turns of her overhead, which is Omega God. Now, she instantly used one turn of it, so Omega God came out, so that instantly was one turn of it, and now she only has one turn of Omega God. Basically, the way she works is her 35, her EX, and her LD, those are all Omega God attacks. But the 35 will only use Omega God if you have the Omega God, you know, summon up, or it'll just be like for one turn and just fall off. So you want to make sure that you upkeep the stacks with the EX and LD, so you're really pressing the LD or the EX whenever it's up for sure, right? So we've got Luna Freya here. Um, what I'm going to do with Luna Freya is I'm just going to Quick Prayer and a Crow. And you can see Anna Crow's back there, right? Like Luna Freya and Hope are each getting two turns before Luna Freya or before uh, Anna Crow. So you can really see the delay in action there, right? Um, and then I'm not going to worry about, well, I guess I'll pop one energy heal because I do want to get a force time off. But with uh, Hope and Luna Freya, it's going to be very, very easy to get that off, right? So I'm going to go ahead and let's just pop an attack here. Um, we'll let Hope take a turn, and we can just let Hope do a little bit of charging as well. Um, so sure, Hope can... Uh, we'll just pop one of these. You do have to be careful with this team comp. Like, your, your buff slots are going to fill up fairly quickly here. Um, and then, sure, let's go ahead and pop Hope's EX. Sounds good. Okay. All right, and then Luna Freya, I think we're just going to go ahead and let's pop her BT effect and just get that going. Um, so basically, the 15, kind of, sort of, holy, this, that attack you're only going to want to press when you need to refill buffs and debuffs. That's basically, like, the only time you use that. Otherwise, you want to use the 35 and do these big Omega God attacks, right? Okay. And then basically anytime you summon Omega God, it will subtract one. So it's not like her overhead isn't like a turn um, buff. What it is is like you just use it up. So like anytime you attack with Omega God, it's going to subtract one from that and then it will go away. So then if you need to use Omega God again, you have to refresh it with the EX or LD to get more stacks of it, right? Um, okay, so with Hole Piercer, let's go ahead and put some more debuffs on. Just for funsies, why not? Okay. Sure, we'll do that and then sure let's just pop another force charge and then we'll just go ahead and do an attack here okay so now we finally got Anna Crow, but we got her up for three turns which is good so now we can kind of show off her stuff a little bit right so let's go ahead and do bold maneuver which is the 35 now this is also going to summon omega god so let's see how much damage we get out of this okay yeah two mil aoe so like you can see the damage is very heavy with her, right? Um, so now her Omega God stacks are off, so you want to make sure you kind of get that back. But let's go ahead and do the 15. Well, let's talk about Bold Maneuver a little bit more. So that Summoned Omega God just did a big AoE attack. You saw the damage there. 2 mil AoE, not in Force Time, is pretty dang good. Does not consume her Brave, and then everything's triple. So that's all it is. It's just a straight-up attack. It's actually non-elemental, but she Dark and Holy enchants herself through one of her other abilities. So she's going to be doing that weakness damage anyways. Now let's do kind of sort of holy. So what this is going to do, this is her actual magic attack. It is AoE. And you can see a lot weaker, right? Like 700k. And that's because it's not Omega God. So if Omega God's not involved, the attacks are a lot weaker. But basically this is a holy AoE attack. It gives her a buff called Close Enough Creator. So this is going to give her Max Brave and Eye Brave up. HP damage up 30%, which is very good. Um, overflow stolen up. It gives her a true holy and dark enchant, so it would even enchant over other elements because it's a true enchant. Um, and then she gets 20% brave retain. So this is uh, basically what will happen is, is whatever she expends, she'll retain 20% of it. So it kind of gives her a higher brave floor in a way. It's not truly a brave floor, but it helps her keep her brave higher, right? Um, then what happens is, is while this close enough creator buff is up, every time she takes a turn, so that's a uh, close enough creator here. She has a 20% chance to refresh her EX gauge, which is awesome because her EX gauge is very slow charging, but it's that very powerful because it deletes turns and gives you Omega God, which is really, really awesome, right? Um, and then also while this buff is up, it always rounds her brave up to the nearest thousand. So just kind of an extra little thing there. It's not like the craziest, but it's there, right? 
Then she does the debuff called Probably Divine Punishment, and this is the one I talked about with the call. All it does is a defense down on the enemies and then a light and dark um, resist down. So pretty basic there, but you want to just make sure you upkeep those. The big one is that close enough creator. You definitely want that up when you're doing your big Unga Bunga FR phase, right? So just make sure you're pretty much just pressing the 15 to upkeep that. Otherwise, you're doing EX if it's up, and then you're doing bold maneuver uh, in between, right? So let's go ahead and show off the LD here. So let's go ahead and pop an LD. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use her AA, which is just going to do a generic stat buff. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and use the LD. Oh, so, <laughs> so we got that little text over the top that said you're sensing a spirit or whatever from Enacro. That means our 20% hit. You can see our EX just refreshed itself after using that. So very, very cool, right? But let's pop the LD. So this is going to do a lot of damage. Uh, this is going to be a pretty big damaging attack. So let's see what it looks like here. It is single target. So yeah, 3.2 mil just on a straight up LD, which is kind of crazy. So that was Astral Annihilation. Summons Omega God. Uh, does a really big single target attack. Does not consume her Brave. Um, and she gets everything tripled as we talked about earlier. This does also refresh that close enough creator buff, which I just talked about. And then she's got three turns of Omega God. Now you see it dropped the two right away because that counted as using one of them, right? So that's basically the base kit. So now what I'll do is I'll just explain her FR. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go into Hope FR and see if we can just nuke these guys out of here, right? So her FR is going to be a, an AoE magic attack. Um, it does delete the enemy's turn, so that also is a turn delete, which is kind of cool. Um, and then what happens is, is her HP damage conditions are 20% for holy damage, 20% for dark damage, and then 40% as long as your current brave is at max, like you have to be at capped map, max brave or higher, which is easy for Enacro to do because a bunch of her attacks don't actually expend her brave, right? So this is why, like, for her own FR, I'm not too high on it right now. Because the other thing is, is she doesn't actually enchant your party for Holy and Dark. So in order to make her work really well without her being able to spam all the turns, you have to like enchant your party for Holy and or Dark. Um, and your party members might not always be keeping their cat brave, so they might not get that 40% bonus. So her FR is really built for her to use, but she doesn't have a burst phase, right? So that's why I definitely think you all can just wait on her. Um, for when your BT comes, that's when you really want to summon for her, right? And so right now, like I said, if you built her up last time, you're good to go. Like, you don't even need to touch the banner other than your free multi. That's all I did was my free multi. And I'm just going to keep her like this. And you can see she's putting up really good numbers. She doesn't need her FR, right? So now let's have some fun here. And we're going to try to do a force time and just see if we can do some crazy nuke stuff, right? Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, we got Luna Freya and then Hope. And then Luna Freya and then Hope. So we got to wait. So we got to kind of just like kill a couple of turns here. So let's go ahead and just do this because Enacro is just way back there. She's very slow. Once again, delays her own turns. Um, hopefully these guys don't like paralyze me because they can do that and it's kind of annoying. Um, I actually probably should delete their turns, but we need Enacro to do that. All right, so Hope is just going to do a regular turn here. And then we'll basically use uh, Luna Frey and Hope. They're going to kind of do some spam stuff. I mean, we're already at 80%, so we actually don't have to spam that much. But what I want to make sure that I do... Because Luna Freya's got her BT effect, I want to make sure I get a four-turn Heavy Prayer and a four-turn Quick Prayer. Hopefully, yeah, and Enercrow's got room for it, so that's good. So let's go ahead. Do I have four stacks right now? I do. So what I can do is I can actually start by Quick Prayering Enercrow. So Enercrow does really benefit from, like, turn manipulation or, like, Luna Freya because she is so slow. If you can do turn manipulation or Luna Freya to give her a bunch of turns... That's going to make her look really good, right? Um, so we've got that. Then I'm going to LD. This is going to put on a four-turn heavy prayer. So basically you want Enacro to be heavy prayered and quick prayered for this combo. And once again, I'm going to do a separate video where I take down that stupid Spiritus tree uh, with this combo, right? So these guys aren't going to last very long because they have a lot less health. But we'll just kind of see how it looks. All right. Um, I could energy heal, but I really don't need to. I can just kind of spam through here. And I don't... I, I just want to make sure I end with Kate Sith because we want Kate Sith call on to make her look really good because Kate Sith is going to really help the damage. So any of these little things you can do for Anna Crow, anything that's going to buff her brave damage or her stats, remember, it all gets tripled with Omega God. So you really want to do anything you can with calls, spheres, equips. It, it actually is a lot more important on her than other characters because you're just amplifying everything up, right? So we'll just go ahead and yeah, I think I can just frigid through all this. 
Um, I'm hoping that we can get a free break here at some point. Um, I want to break these enemies back so I can get Enecro in front of them. That's what I would really like to do. Because I'm worried they're going... Okay, so I'm going to break here. Um, so what I'm going to do is... Enecro should already be full on Heavy Prayer, right? Let me just double check. Yeah, Quick Prayer and Heavy Prayer is all good. Um, yeah, we're good. She's got all of her turns there. Let's go ahead and um, I'm going to put Lucky Girl on. So let's do that. So, okay, and the B enemy actually, I think they're just doing, let me see. I don't think the B enemy is actually attacking. Okay, so I think we're okay, I'm hoping, to let the B enemy take a turn. Um, all right, so now Enacro is just going to attack through. Actually, I want to put Enacro's AA on. Um, I should have done that before the call, but that's okay. Ugh. No, because I've only got two turns. Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna forgo the AA. I should have done the AA first and then the call, because the call is only a two-turn call. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and fridge a Fabuki through. And then we will let Hope go through. And all Hope really has to do... Oh, shoot, I think I was supposed to Quick Prayer him. Is his instant turn? Oh, it is instant turn. Okay, we're, we're good. So Hope didn't need Quick Prayer. We're good. Um, Hope, I've already got the Ice Blade on, so we're good. Um, I can hit this to upgrade the stacks, which we'll do. So now that's at max stacks, which is good. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then, I think I'm free to just FR right here. I think I am. So let's FR. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Hope. So we're going to FR. Now, remember, Hope's got a bunch of instant turns. And the unique thing about Hope FR is he can do one of the biggest, like, per turn percentages, but they don't do attacks. Uh, but we can utilize that with Enacro, who is such a nuke character, that it's worth expending the turns to do it. So what we're going to do with Hope is we're essentially just going to do a bunch of free turns here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to shell and protect the buff this. And we're going to go up. We basically want Enacro to have uh, the Force Gauge at 5. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use 1 for that Sid Rain's call to get launching. And then the next 4 will be her attacks. So that's essentially what you want to do here. So, And then we'll pop probably the EX or the LD for Hope at the end. But yeah, we're just going to keep going through with these. And you're going to see we're getting like 120, yeah, about 125 per shot, right? Which is just a ton. So we're just basically going to max this sucker out to like eight, 900%. <laughs> and then let Enacro go crazy, right? So we're going to do one more here. So that's going to be six. Um, I feel like I want to do maybe one more. Um... Actually, the attack, I feel like, would do a lot. Yeah, let's do one more, and then we'll attack. That's fine. Yep, 738. Okay, and then we'll attack with Hope, and then give Enacro a turn. So let's go ahead, and let's pop the LD, I suppose. Sure, let's do that. And that's going to push the enemies back, which is good. Yep, perfect. Now, is going to come up with a pretty high gauge, right? She had 811 here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop Reigns. And sure, we'll just pull Luna Freya up is fine. Okay. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, these enemies should be launchable. I'm like, that would be bad if they're not launchable. Yeah, they're launchable. All right, so now, now we're going to see some crazy numbers that you've, like, never seen before. <laughs> um, so watch what happens here with this high percentage when we start. Basically, now you just spam LD. And the damage is going to be, I'm going to hit the 62% guy first here. So watch what happens. We're just going to hit the Etacro's LD here. And let's see what kind of damage we get. This is going to be crazy. Okay. And then we... Okay, so we got a Brave Attack here. And then we can H... No, we got a Brave Attack on both of these. Because we didn't have Brave Gains there. That's fine. Alright, so that was... <laughs> I believe that was a 61 mil. I think that was 61 mil. Okay. So this is the crazy nuke. I, 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 I wish I could pause my game in that moment. But I'm pretty sure that was 61 mil. Which is absolutely insane. Let's do another one. <laughs> Let's do another one. He's not going to survive this. But th this is the nuke strat. Like, this is crazy. So we're going to HP attack here. Now we're going to get launch damage with it. Okay. And I'm going to see if I can pause it. Ah, no, the pause didn't work. But that's 66 mil. Yeah, I'm count I had to quick count the numbers. We just did like 60 mil launches. So <laughs> the, the numbers are just the most insane thing you've never seen in your life. So literally... What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk into that tree sphere disc and the tree's going to be at like 90% and Enacro's going to take like four turns and just kill it. 
and you pretty much forego the stupid like 19 like when you're under 19 percent where like you can only do damage during the launch phase that's the part that was so frustrating to me and a crow he's gonna be at like 20 something percent and it's just gonna die when you're doing 60 million launches um that's literally like three shots and these enemies are dead. So anyways, guys, there you go. There's Anna Crow's character guide and then kind of that crazy launch strat. Um, if you don't have her at all and you do have Hope FR fully built up, like you might want to pick her up just if you want to do this Chi strat. It's not the funnest thing in the world. I'm going to use it on the tree because I'm mad at the tree. The tree makes me very angry and I haven't beaten it yet. So I'm going to use it. But it is kind of a cheese tactic. But that's how they built their like... That's the whole point of her is to be a very selfish uh, damage dealing nuke. So you can see she actually can like out damage like Tifa and Renoa, but you have to have a very specific setup to do it. So anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think of Anna Crow. Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all on the next one.